Hey guys, welcome back to the Koala Craft server. Um, I just pulled a diamond block out of the compressor, and the reason we need a diamond block will make sense to you shortly. But I'm just going to show you what I've been working on. I've set up, I've started setting up pathways and lamp posts, and we're going to make some lampy goodness. And now we're going to use wrath lamps for this and these are pretty weird things they need wrath igniters blah 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 and a wrath igniter is a diamond shard and nether brick and you're like wow what are all of these obscure things well the first thing I'm going to do is put three nether rack inside the compressor so that we can get ourselves um, a piece of nether brick for that wrath igniter. Oh, also, you can see I got my advanced lap pack, chainsaw, and diamond drill, and you'll notice the advanced um, the advanced lap pack has a energy reading in the corner of my screen. It will say energy level and then a percentage. So, we need to get something called a diamond shard for this to work. Now, to do that, we need to make this special craft packet. Now, a craft mat. Now, craft packets are part of a mod called factorization, and they're a way to automate crafting. Now, we're not going to get into that this episode, but this special craft packet is for making diamond shards. Now, to get the craft packet to work, we need a stamper. So, we'll just open that up here, and you'll see we need four cobblestone, a piston, and a crafting table. So I'm going to go ahead and make this craft pack stamper, just look at the recipe, and then I'll be back and I'll show you the diamond shards. Alright, there we go, there is our craft pack stamper, which we'll just place up here next to the table, and we'll just put the craft packet in there, and you'll see it stamps out 18 diamond shards. Now if we go get that piece of nether brick, we can turn these diamond shards into a wrath igniter, and this wrath igniter is going to have um, several purposes for us. The first will be making the actual wrath lamp, and the second is to make the wrath lamp we need something called dark iron. And I'll show you how to get dark iron here in a second. Now the way dark iron works, it, well, let me just put all this iron in the compressor and start turning it into iron blocks. And while that's doing that, I'll, I'll explain to you about a wrath igniter over in the ocean. And to demonstrate what I'm talking about, I'm going to get a stack of cobble and a stack of dirt. Alright, so the way a wrath igniter works is it's like a very advanced igniter except it will only burn things of the same type. That definition sounds weird, but I'll show you what I mean in just a second and it will make perfect sense. Okay. So, here we have a 4x4 four four square of dirt, and here we have a 4x4 four four square of cobble. And it's becoming night time, so I'll go sleep and then finish this demonstration. Okay, so we're back. And if we pop over here, if I light this dirt on fire, you'll see these weird kind of particles come up. And I'm not sure, this might not work in the water. I might need to lift this up a level. Okay, let's try the cobble. So you can light the cobble on fire, and you see it smokes. And there's these funny particles coming off of it. But those particles won't spread over to this dirt, they'll just stay on the cobble. Now after the wrath fire has consumed all of the blocks of this type, and you can see it's turning the um, cobblestone into smooth stone, um, the wrath fire will burn out and create normal fire as a result. So there you just got to see it in action, turning all of this um, stone into cobble. And it does a similar thing for... did I just ruin all this water? Gosh dang it. Um, it does a similar thing for the iron blocks. You light the iron blocks on fire and it will consume them 
and turn them into dark iron, just like it turned the smooth or the cobblestone into smooth stone. So, I'm just going to pop down here and see how many iron blocks we have. Six, perfect. So we'll go take these six iron blocks and throw them down. Okay, so for the wrath lamp, we need four dark iron per lamp, and I think that means we can make six lamps, because I'm pretty sure you get four dark iron per dark iron block. So I'll just lay these out and light them on fire and we'll see that they turn into this fancy dark iron stuff. So, um, let me just ch check. Okay, so yeah, a uh, block of dark iron just turns into four of these, so that means I can make four wrath lamps. Okay, so you can see that the iron has, oh geez, the iron has turned into dark iron. Um, there we are. And so now we'll just mine this back up and just toss it in here and we'll get dark iron in return. And now I believe we need, yep, we need silver and we need glass panes. So I'll just run back over to the factory and get me a stack of silver ingots from down here. Um, there we go, silver. And then I need to run back over to the main base and tap into my glass resources. Okay, so pop in here and just go down the stairs or ladder as it were. And I should have a ton of glass or not. Is all of my glass gone? Nope, there's a bunch of it. Okay. So. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. There we go. So we can get a bunch of glass panes. And all right. So we'll just split the silver up, split the dark iron up, split the glass panes, and put the wrath igniter in there. Okay, there you go. And you can see we actually each uh, wrath lamp you make uses up a little bit of the igniter and so we just happen to make just enough we happen to have just enough igniter left to make the wrath lamps we wanted to now these wrath lamps are pretty cool because they fill up massive massive areas with light so they're pretty neat although you can tell they're um, they're sort of expensive to make Sort of, not really. So you can make... For one... For nine diamonds, you get 18 diamond shards. And let's say each diamond shard gets us six wrath lamps. Um, so six times 18. Let me just do that math really quickly. So for... One diamond, you can make 108 wrath lamps. Um, and then, you know, that's, that doesn't include the iron you'll end up spending on it. But I don't think iron's a big deal. So I only have three left. So I'll go ahead and I'll put one of them in the mine here. Like that. Okay. And then I'll put the other two. Oh yeah, I have to show that to you. I um, completely forgot I had just built that off camera. But we'll get to that in a second. And I'll put the other two up on these light posts. And as I build the roads, I'll continue to make these raft lamps, etc., etc. All right, there we go. So I had just enough raft lamps to do what I wanted to do. Yep, it's pretty beautiful, and um, 
Let me just look at the clock. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's just starting to be day. So we'll come back at night and you'll see they light up they light up a fairly large area with light. So I shouldn't have as many issues with mobs as I've been having in the past. Why is there so much EU on that? Is that hooked up properly? Yeah, it's hooked up properly. I just must not be using the power. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you guys this episode is what I've been working on, which would be a strip mine. So, for once, every time I do a strip mine, I promise myself I'm going to do this, and this time I actually did it. I'm actually making a strip mine look nice. Now this cave down doesn't look nice just because of the sheer amount of resources of what it taken to replace all the wall on the way down, but once you get down here, you can see it's kind of this systematic system of cross beams and stone and wood patterns, and each one of these will be a little, um, uh, a tunnel, a poke hole tunnel where I just dig straight down and make poke holes as I go. So that should be fun and interesting, and I'm really glad I um, created this in the way I did. And I'm going to start working on um, Railcraft. I've been doing a lot of research, and actually you'll notice something about this tunnel. It's a 3x3 three three tunnel. And I believe that is the size tunnel a tunnel bore from Railcraft makes. So don't necessarily worry what that means right now because we will be getting into it very shortly. And by very shortly, I mean like really, really soon. Like I, I have the gears are in motion for this. And there's a couple of things I want to do with Railcraft aside from just building rail systems to Sigil's base and to Albanax and Vamp space. But we'll worry about that when we get there. So, where did my meat go? There it is. <clears throat> oh, nom nom. Now, let's see here. I just. I completely lost my trail of thought. Right. Right. So, you'll be seeing a lot of this rolling machine inside of Railcraft, which we'll get to. And I need to go get some more nether brick because this system is actually starting to run out of power. These two are fully charged, this one's fully ch What? Why are these all? Oh, th right, this one's empty, and this one's starting to deplete. So I'm gonna have to start pumping more netherrack into this system, and a railcraft building will actually help us with this. But again, that's all in due time. Um, what I wanna talk about right now is I said I was going to create a pulverize um, pipeline down here, right off to the side. So I was going to create another one of these except just with a pulverizer. But then I discovered that pulverizers can't pulverize a lot of the things I wanted to pulverize. They can't pulverize appetite. Um, they're not as efficient at pulverizing redstone. And um, hey look, it's Mr. Snuggles. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tear out the industrial craft stuff and from under my base and I'm going to create an industrial craft building. Much like these these buildings you've already seen. So um I'm probably going to build it over here. I don't know, I'll have to see. Um, <laughs> what do I want to do? It would be more advantageous if, oh, okay, so it's starting to become nighttime, but you'll see that in these wrath lamp areas, you can hardly tell it's become nighttime. For the most part, and if I hit F3 here, for the most part, you'll see that this area is pretty much unaffected by the change to nighttime. All of these areas along the path are up to 10, and even over here it doesn't even get low enough to really be spawning mobs. Now back here, 
So you, look how far away you have to get from a wrath lamp to actually be able to spawn mobs. So like, the wrath lamp's effect is all the way to back here. And another thing that you really don't get to see because of the fact we're not in a cave is a wrath lamp will light 30 blocks downwards. So if they weren't on these light posts and they were just at the top of a cavern, they'd go down 30 blocks. So they're kind of like floodlights, which might be useful for ravines and such. But yeah, you can walk over here and you can see this whole cavern entrance is protected now by this wrath light with good brightness levels and all of that. And so as I build more paths, I'll continue to add in wrath lamps, maybe put some on this ender por end portal. And so this area will be lit by those. All right. So enough talking about the wrath lamps, and now we need to figure out where exactly I want the industrial craft facility. I think what I'm going to do is kill the skeleton. All right. So mm, it's nighttime. Nighttime, nighttime, nighttime. So what I think I'm going to do is take a quick break until it becomes day and then we can continue walking around and discussing how to plot out what I want to do. So I'll see you in just a few seconds. Okay, the sun is rising, that's close enough for me. Now, let's go take a look at things. Actually, you know what, while we're doing nothing, let's go take a look at Kenzie's building. We haven't really explored it. Uh, where did she... Where did she even get all this wool? Do we even have sheep? What? What's up here? Very nice. This is a very nice building with a... What looks like just kind of like an empty courtyard. Oh, I think this is the rest of the house she hasn't built yet. I still... I don't... I want to know where she got all this wool from. Because we don't... I haven't... I've seen sheep. Just not very many. Oh yeah, I was trying to get him to sleep so I wouldn't have to actually wait five minutes, but um, he wasn't around. Thanks for nothing, Mr. Snuggles. All right, so... Things need to move. So what we're doing is we're going to set up and do some planimifying. So let's kind of get a vantage point here looking down. Now I want to be careful about expanding in that direction because that way is spawn and albanac space. Um, I do have all this flat plains area because I know there's a desert between us and them quite literally. What is that black cube thing right there? Okay, I have to go. I have to go see what that is because I've never seen that before. Seriously, what is that thing? Um, it looks like like a giant obsidian block, but it's not. What is it? Oh, it's a tree. Well, that's disappointing. Oh, oh, the, the project. Oh, I see. I don't know what he's talking about, but I'll just play along. Okay, so... Let's see here, let me pop up and get a vantage point, and oh my goodness, that's bad. I don't like that place. So let me pillar up, and we will look at my land, and we will devise a plan. So, mm, it's a shame that's so far away from everything else. So I'm going to have both the strip mine and the quarry world from Mr. Craft. And I think what I'm going to do is work on flattening this hill down. And after I get this hill more or less flattened down, I think I'm going to build... Um, Hmm. Let's think about this. I think I want to move these things. I think I want to move the cow pen, the farms, and the nether portal. Make the nether portal its own room, like over there, kind of. 
And then what I'd like to do is I'd like to have the central sorting. Blah, 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 words, blah. Okay. What I'd like to do is I'd like to have the central sh sh the shorting the sh the central sorting station right here and this sorting station is going to be different than the previous ones the previous what is it two that we've done because the previous two um, used red power but this time we'll have to be using buildcraft and uh, so that that will be interesting I already have it worked out don't worry so I think I'm going to build the central sorting station right there in the Sinthar and then I think that's going to remain my ore processing facility and then right here-ish I'm going to build a um, industrial craft factory and the I'm not going to be um, I'm not going to be processing ores in the industrial craft factory the industrial craft factory is going to be for uh, advanced alloys. What else is the industrial craft factory going to be for? The advanced alloys, tree sap, and pulverization. So those are really the only three things that are going to take place in the industrial craft factory. And it will be similar to that uh, thermal expansion one. It will have one floor for manual labor and then another floor for automation and then I'll have a central building set up here for um, storage and organization and I will be pumping things in from the forestry farms and the mines and the quarry once all that is set up so really what we're at right now as we're um, we're at the stage of having to set up a central facility for our items and move out of the basement of our house so that we can actually get to some serious automation because once we have a sorting facility to take care of all of the miscellaneous items we can just go to town on automation and it would be really nice to move these solar panels out of the ground and into a place where I think they'll do better Okay, well that's going to be it for this episode guys. I'm sorry this was more of an explainy episode, but we're currently at the point where we've done all the basic stuff and now I need to put some time into building, um, building some buildings, if that makes sense. So we'll be building the, um, the sorting facility first, which will be done off camera. And I'll just go ahead and bring you in and show it to you once it is done. And I'll probably build that and the Industrial Craft one together and show them to you. So until the next time you guys see me on Koala Craft, toodles!